Good morning, boys and girls. This is day two of your week six packet. We are going to be talking about inferences today and your teeth. Let's go ahead and read about teeth. When babies are born, their teeth are hidden. The first baby teeth break through around six to 12 months old. Soon, the entire first set of 20 teeth called baby teeth come in. This happens for many kids by the time they are three years old. Starting at age five or six, most kids start losing their baby teeth. These teeth get loose because they are pushed out by the permanent teeth that are under them. By age 12 or 13, most baby teeth have fallen out and kids have a full set of permanent teeth. When the permanent teeth come in, there are 28 of them. Four more teeth, called wisdom teeth, usually grow in at the back of the mouth between the ages of 17 and 25. These wisdom teeth usually make the teeth too crowded and need to be moved. Inside your mouth, the teeth are surrounded by gums. The part of the tooth that you can see is called the crown. Much of the tooth, including its root, is hidden under the gums. The crown of each tooth is covered with enamel. Enamel is a covering on the outside of the tooth. It protects the inside part of the tooth. Under the enamel is the dentin. The dentin is the largest part of the tooth and goes from the top of the tooth down to the roots. Dentin is not as strong as enamel, but it is very Dentin is not as strong as enamel, but it is still very hard. Dentin protects the very inside part of the tooth, called the pulp. Nerve endings and a blood supply for each tooth are found in the pulp. When you eat foods that are too hot or too cold, or if you get a cavity, the pulp is the part of the tooth that feels the pain. The tooth's blood vessels feed the tooth and keep it alive and healthy. You have several different types of teeth in your mouth. The two front teeth and the teeth on either side of them are incisors. There are four incisors on the top and four on bottom. These teeth are flat and are used for cutting and chopping food. We bite into food using these teeth. Next to the incisors are pointy teeth called canine. Canine teeth help tear food. There are two on the top and two on bottom. Next to your canine teeth are your bicuspid teeth. You have eight bicuspid in all. There are four on top and four on the bottom. Bicuspids are shaped differently from both incisors and canines. Bicuspids are bigger and have ridges. This allows them to crush and grind food. And the very back of your mouth are the molars. There are eight of these, with four on the top and four on the bottom. Molars are the largest and strongest teeth. They grind the food until it's small and ready to be swallowed. Wisdom teeth are the last four teeth to come in, with one in each back corner of the mouth. Remember, boys and girls, good readers read their text more than one time. Now you are going to go ahead and read this text a second time independently, marking up your text. Number each paragraph, double star important facts, circle keywords or details you want to remember, put an X over things you don't understand, a question mark over things you find confusing or have questions about, Underline unfamiliar words, put an exclamation mark over things you find interesting, draw an arrow next to parts you made connections to. Push pause and once you have marked up your text, push play and we will go over it together. Okay, I've marked up my text, I numbered my paragraphs, I double starred a few things that I thought were important like um, when you get your first set of teeth, there are only 20, but when you get your permanent set of teeth, there are 28. I thought, hmm, that might be important. 
I also thought we might want to remember that by the age of 12 or 13, so by the time you're in middle school, most of your baby teeth have fallen out and you have a full set of permanent teeth. So that would probably be around seventh grade. Um, let's see. Um, I have a few question marks, but these aren't really things that I didn't understand. They're just questions that it made me think of. For example, when it talks about we have get our first set of teeth, baby teeth, and then our permanent teeth, it made me think, hmm, do animals have multiple sets of teeth? I know sharks lose teeth and get new teeth, but like do dogs and cats, have you ever found like a loose tooth from your dog or a tooth that fell out? It made me think, I wonder if they lose teeth. Um, another question I had in here is it said, um, it talked about your wisdom teeth were the last to come in, but up here somewhere it said that your wisdom teeth usually make your teeth too crowded and need to be removed. So my question then about wisdom teeth is, if they make our mouth too crowded and we have to remove them, why do we have them? Why do they come in? Something to think about. And then I also made a connection talking about wisdom teeth because I remember it says you get them between 17 and 25. And when I was about 17, 16 or 17, my wisdom teeth came in and I remember that I had to get them out. Only when mine came in, they were coming in sideways so they couldn't just pull them out. They actually had to put me under you know, they use that special gas and they put you to sleep and then they had to do like a little mini surgery and take out my wisdom teeth. And my face really swelled up and turned black and blue for several weeks. I remember that I did it over, over a school break, so I didn't have to go to school, but um, I also remember that you couldn't eat for a few days after that, so I got lots of ice cream and shakes, so that was that was a fun part of it. Um, what else? I thought this was really interesting. Did you know that much of the tooth, including the root, is under the gums? So most of your tooth you're not even seeing. It's under the gums. So I thought that was interesting. So I think they're talking about all of this is what I think they're talking about, would all be underneath your gums. So I thought, hmm, that was interesting. Mm, I think that was it. Oh, and then the, I made another connection. I thought, oh, canine teeth help tear food apart. And we know that dogs are called canines and they are predators, which means they hunt animals. So they're carnivores. And um, so that's something we have in common with dogs, I guess, that we have pointy teeth to help tear up meat because um, although we are omnivores, generally, some people, um, which means we eat meat and plants, um, dogs are carnivores and so they have pointy teeth just to tear apart meat. So I thought that was interesting and kind of made a little connection there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go to our questions now and see what do we need to focus on. One more thing I forgot to tell you. You're probably wondering why did I mark this all up with yellow. Um, it told me to underline words I didn't know and there were a lot of words I saw that I didn't know. However, using my context clue strategy on figuring out words, I noticed that on all these words that I didn't know, almost every single one of them, they gave me a definition of what that word meant. So they told me that baby teeth were your first set of 20 teeth. They told me that wisdom teeth are four teeth that are at the back of the mouth. They told me that the crown is the part of the tooth that you can see. I could keep going. So all of this highlighted is where they have given me the definition of all those words. The only words that I saw that maybe they did not give a definition for was the word permanent. If something is permanent, it means it's going to be there like 
forever or for a really long time. This whole thing is going to be focusing on inferences, okay? And we see that right here in the title, inferences. So before we start, we're actually going to watch a short video about reminding us what inferences are and how to make them. This video is all about making inferences. By the end of this video, you will be able to define the word inference, define textual evidence, read closely in a text to make inferences, and analyze an author's words to determine multiple pieces of textual evidence that support your inferences. So, you might be asking, what is an inference? The fact is, you make inferences every single day, usually without even realizing it. For example, if you sit down next to your best friend at lunch and she moves to another table, you might infer that she is angry at you or that you smell funny. Or if you get home from school and your dog jumps up and starts licking your face at the door, you can infer that he is happy to see you. Basically, an inference is an educated guess based on the evidence that is right in front of us, combined with our past experiences. Inferences are definitely required in everyday life, but they are also required when we are reading, watching movies, and even listening to music. In your notes, list three inferences that you can make from this picture. Good job! Good readers are constantly making inferences as they read literature or informational texts. This is because writers don't always tell us everything explicitly. They want us to think a little bit about what we are reading. For example, read the following paragraph with me as I read it aloud. Katie was excited about tonight. Happily, she put on her big red shoes and bright yellow outfit. Her mom helped Katie paint her face with a big red circle on each cheek. Just before Katie ran out the door to meet her friends, she attached her large squeaky nose and placed a bright blue pointy hat on top of her head. She grabbed an empty bag and went out into the night. Notice that this paragraph never tells us explicitly that Katie is going out trick-or-treating for Halloween, but we immediately make that inference because of the details that the author has provided. The author tells us that Katie's mom is helping her to paint her face white with big red circles. We know from personal experience, like seeing normal people in the real world, that this is not ordinary makeup. So we know that it must be a special occasion. But she's running out the door to meet her friends. So she doesn't seem to be in a play because we know from experience that plays are usually performed indoors. But it's that last sentence that really helps us to make the inference. Katie grabbed an empty bag and went out into the night. Because most people have been trick or treating or at least seen others do it on TV or in movies. We know from our experiences that this means it's Halloween. These details that lead us to that conclusion are what we call textual evidence. Textual evidence is specific information from a text that we use to support our inferences. Now that you understand how to make inferences and use textual evidence to support them, you're ready to take the quiz over inferences and textual evidence. Question one. The author stated that when a baby is born, its teeth are hidden. Make an inference. Where are the baby's teeth? As the video here, take your schema and the clues from the story. Figure out where are the baby's teeth. Let's focus on this first paragraph and see if we can find any clues. When babies are born, their teeth are hidden. The first baby teeth break through around six to 12 months old. Okay, break through. I feel like this is a clue. Break through. What are they breaking through? Hmm, well, take your schema. What do you know? I know that when a baby is born, if you look in their mouth, all you can see 
is pink, right? All you can see is their gums. There's nothing there. And you know like when they suck on your finger, there's no teeth there. It's just like your gums, right? So if they break through, what might they be breaking through? So where are the baby's teeth? Are they under the baby's gum? In the baby's stomach? Well, now that is just a ridiculous answer. So I'm pretty confident we can go ahead and cross that, that off. I know that their teeth are not in their stomach. Or do the parents have them? Well, I think that's kind of ridiculous too, right? It's not like the parents have the teeth and then go shove them in their mouth. It says that they're breaking through something. So to me, the only answer that's not ridiculous would be this one, under the baby's gums. Okay, let's look at question two. Make an inference. The author stated that wisdom teeth make the teeth too crowded. What does this tell you about the person's mouth when the wisdom teeth come in? Pause the video and using your schema and the clues, I want you to think, what does this tell you about the person's mouth when the wisdom teeth come in? If it's too crowded, hmm, let's think. Think about recess time when you go into the bathroom but you go at the wrong time and everybody's in the bathroom. There's 20 people in the bathroom. What does the bathroom feel like? Does the bathroom feel like it's too big? Does the bathroom feel like it's too round? Or does the bathroom feel like it's too small? So using my schema, when a lot of people, because crowded means that there's a lot of people or things in there. So if I'm thinking of the bathroom, when it's a lot of people in there, I feel really squished and I feel like the space that I am in is too small. So let's go to this paragraph where it talks about that. It says, um, when the permanent teeth come in, there are 28 of them. So remember you started with 20 teeth, now there are 28, so here's a clue. Four more teeth, called wisdom teeth, usually grow in at the back of the mouth between the ages of 17 and 25. Remember, you have most of your teeth by 12 or 13. So now when you're 17, in between 17 and 25, you get four more teeth. These wisdom teeth usually make the teeth too crowded and need to be removed. Why would you have to take your teeth out? Well, I know sometimes if your teeth are infected or something, or there's an, they're sick, then you have to take your teeth out. But this is talking about that they're too crowded. And 28, that sounds like a lot, especially when we only started with 20. So that makes me think there's too many, too many in there. So what do you think? Do you think it's because your mouth is too big? Do you think it's because your mouth is too round? Or do you think it's because your mouth is too small? I think it would be because your mouth is too small. And that's why they have to pull some of your teeth out to make more room. Your mouth is too small. And I came to that conclusion thinking of the bathroom time at recess when it's super squishy and I feel like I can't move in there because there are too many people and too small of a space. Question three. What do the roots of a tooth do? A, help a person mash food into small pieces. B, clean the tooth. C, Anchor the tooth to the gums. Pause the video. Find which paragraph talks about the roots. Find your clues and make your choice. Hint, this will be an inference. It is not a right there answer. That means you're going to have to take your own schema and clues to figure it out. Okay, I found the answer in paragraph three. It talks about much of the tooth, including its root, is, is hidden under the gums. And when we read it the first time, we talked about how I thought that 
this top part was the crown and this was all hidden under the gums. And this to me looks like what they would be talking about, the roots. Now, paragraph three did not really tell me what the root was, it just said it was under the gum. So, when I hear the word root, it makes me think of a plant. And I know that when I think of a plant, here's the ground, and here's the plant, and underneath the plant, there are all these roots. And this is how it gets its nutrients and water and how the plant grows, right? So it made me think when I learned about plants that I know the root keeps the plant in the ground so the wind doesn't just blow it over, it doesn't just flop over. Hmm, and this sort of looks like this and I know it's under the gums just like a plant is under, the roots are under the ground. Hmm, so do I think that that's what mashes food into small pieces? Mm, no, because your food would touch this part up here, like the crown, not the roots underneath. So it can't be A. B, clean the tooth? Mm, I don't think anything talked about cleaning the tooth. I don't think that was in there at all. Um, comment below if I'm mistaken, but I don't think, I know that with my own schema, my toothbrush cleans my teeth. So it can't be that. And then C, anchor the teeth to the gums. Well, I know an anchor, hmm, that makes me think of like a ship, right? And when a ship drops its anchor, it does that to keep it in one place. And I know that the roots on a plant under the ground keep it in one place so the wind can't just blow it away. Hmm, so I think maybe the roots of a tooth are there to keep it in the gum so it doesn't just fall out. So I would infer that C is my best answer. Roots anchor the tooth to the gums. Okay, let's look at the next question. Match the tooth to its description. So these are right there answers. Um, these are your definitions. And these are your types of teeth, okay? Types of teeth. They started telling me about the different kinds of teeth starting in paragraph five. It says you have several different types of teeth in your mouth. I want you to go to paragraph five and six. Find these teeth and as you find them, when you see the definition, mark it on your paper and underline it. When you've done that, push play and we will go over the answers together. Okay, these were the words that I had underlined and highlighted because I said although I might not know what they mean, the text gave me the definitions. So I'm just starting on paragraph five and as I come to the word, I will stop. You have several different types of teeth in your mouth. The two front teeth and the teeth on either side of them are incisors, okay? There's my first one, incisors. What are they? They are the two front teeth on either side and the two on either side of them. So these two and these. So these two and the one on each side. Those are all your incisors. So let's see. Pointy teeth which tear food. The largest teeth which get food ready to swallow for crushing and grinding up food, for cutting or biting into food, the teeth which usually have to be removed. Hmm, so I didn't get enough information. Let me go back. There are four incisors on the top and four on bottom. Oh, so these ones on the bottom too. These teeth are flat and are used for cutting and chopping food. So let's see, which one said cutting and chopping? Pointy teeth, no. The largest teeth, no. Crushing and grinding, not really the same as cutting and chopping. For cutting and biting, that looks right. The teeth which usually have to be removed, nope. I'm gonna say A, 
Incisors are the teeth for cutting or biting into food. Okay, let's keep going. Number six, next to the incisors are your pointy teeth called canines. So if you put your hand in your mouth, you can feel those pointy teeth. Or if you look in a mirror, you can see them. Canine teeth help tear food. Okay, so let's go back to our answers. Pointy teeth which tear food. Hey, there was my answer right away. But just in case, I'm gonna read the other ones. The largest teeth, nope. For crushing and grinding, nope. The teeth which usually have to be removed, nope. So it was B canine, the pointy teeth which tear food. Okay, let's keep reading. It says, next to your canine teeth are your bicuspid teeth. You have eight bicuspid in all. There are four on top and four on the bottom. Bicuspids are shaped differently from both incisors and canines. Bicuspids are bigger and have ridges. This allows them to crush and grind food. So crush and grind food right there. Let's go to my question. So I have, are they the largest teeth? No. For crushing and grinding up food? Yes, but let me double check. The teeth which usually have to be removed? Nope. So C right here on number six, crushing and grinding food. Okay, let's keep going. In the very back of your mouth are the molars. There are eight of these with four on the top and four on the bottom. Molars are the largest and strongest teeth. They grind the food until it's small and ready to be swallowed. Okay, let's go look. The largest teeth which get red food ready to swallow. Yep, that's my answer, but I have to read the other one just to make sure. The teeth which usually have to be removed. Nope, it didn't say they have to be removed. D is for number five. So, just by process of elimination, I know that eight is gonna be E, but I'm gonna double check and make sure that makes sense because I might have gotten one of the other ones wrong. So let's go back. It says, wisdom teeth are the last four teeth to come in with one in each back corner of the mouth. <coughs> now it didn't say the teeth which usually have to be removed. So, hmm, what do I do? I remember it talked about wisdom teeth up here too. In the second paragraph, these wisdom teeth usually make the teeth too crowded and need to be removed. So I am right, but I had to search for that one and look in two different places. Number nine. Why do you think you have different kinds of teeth? So this is another inference. Why do you think we have different kinds of teeth? Take your schema and clues from the story. Um, and when you have picked up the clues and your schema, make your answer choice and then push play and come back. Okay, well I know question four, five, six, seven, eight those told me all about the different types of teeth I had and what their jobs were. Um, nowhere in my article did it talk about anything about making my smile look better, so I can cross that off right away. Each has a different purpose to help you eat different foods. Um, this did tell me how each tooth had a different purpose or job. Let's look at C. Each one fits together. Um, well, I do know that my teeth do fit together, but that's not really anything that the article said. So I think B is a much better answer because I have lots of evidence on the different purposes of my teeth and how they help me eat different foods. B is the best answer. 10. Imagine a person had braces before they got their wisdom teeth. The braces made their teeth straight. What might happen when their wisdom teeth come in? Hmm. 
So you had crooked teeth, they put braces on, now your teeth are perfectly straight, but then your wisdom teeth come in. And we know from the article from paragraph two that it said those wisdom teeth usually make your teeth crowded and they have to be removed. So what do you think might happen? Hmm. I know if we go back to the analogy of when uh, we were talking about the bathroom and too many people being in the bathroom at recess, we kind of get, um, we're all squishy, right? And we kind of get knocked around a little. Hmm. And then I think sometimes in the cafeteria when we have like an awards assembly or some kind of show or program and we have to squish together, sometimes we're like kind of squishy in there. Hmm. And we do kind of get bumped around and sometimes somebody steps on our hand. What might happen to my teeth? A. Their teeth would get crowded and crooked. Well, that makes sense because if your teeth are straight and then they're being squished together, maybe they can't sit straight anymore. I think that makes sense. B. They would become smarter. Mm, teeth aren't people and they don't have a brain. So they can't become smarter. I think that's a silly answer and I'm just going to cross that one off. C. It wouldn't change their other teeth. Well, I know from talking about assemblies in the bathroom when it's crowded, sometimes I am like this and sometimes I do have to turn sideways. I think their teeth might get crowded and become crooked again. That's the inference I would make. Okay, boys and girls, hopefully this was helpful and you learned something about your teeth today. And I will see you tomorrow for day three.